Hello. So we, it is Sunday uh, afternoon. We went to brunch and now we are at the Russell Farms pumpkin patch. We just walked in and then I came back out to get my camera because there's like a, a corn maze and all this kind of stuff. So I wanted to show it. So like, hold on a second, somebody's driving by. So here is the pumpkin patch. Look at this, all those pumpkins. So I'm getting ready to go in here. We just um, met up with Alex's mom and Liliana, my sister-in-law, and Carlitos and Sebastian. So here I'll show you all the things that included. You get uh, two acre scavenger hunt corn maze, five acre scavenger hunt corn maze miniature golf, petting zoo, hayride, bounce house, which Alex's mom called the colorful castle, wizard and tumbleweed rides, pedal, carts, playgrounds, more. So it is going to be a fun afternoon and I will show you guys some of it. So there's all kinds of stuff to do here. There goes the hayride right there. And look at this. It's a petting zoo. Look. Aww. Aren't they so sweet? Petting zoo. Did you see the animals, Carlitos? Are you having fun, Liliana? This is my beautiful sister-in-law, Liliana. <laughs> We're going to the corn maze. Where are we going? The corn maze. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> here is the corn maze entrance right over hey, here. You said maid. Maid? Yeah. Corn maze? Are you going to get scared? I don't want to get, I don't want to get lost. What are you going to be for Halloween? I just said Hulk. The Hulk. And then your birthday. After, after Halloween is my birthday. After Halloween is your birthday. Yes. But not at Chuck E. Cheese, because Chuck E. Cheese is closed. Yeah. So we're gonna have to find someplace else. Okay, now we're getting ready to go into the corn maze. It's gonna be pretty scary. Don't be scared. <laughs> corn maze entrance, no smoking. Large scavenger hunt corn maze. You're looking for six different colored posts. Let us know if you find them. Do not take corn out of maize. Do you hear that? Do not take that corn out of maize. <laughs> we are in the world's, Here, what? Yeah. We're in the world's longest corn maze. I feel like we've been in here for a half an hour. <laughs> Our nephews, my nephews keep on <laughs> taking us into dead ends. <laughs> it's your fault, Liliana. Uh-huh, I'm very good, it's cold. <laughs> are you cold? Yes, not right now. But it is fun, look at this corn maze. It's like, and it just goes around and around. I feel like we're going around in circles. And there's my husband, and there's yes, my, I feel like we're going around in circles too. We are. Can you take me? Yeah, I'm gonna take a picture of my husband for him and I will be back. Please. Please. We're about to leave. It has been a fun day at the pumpkin patch. There's my beautiful mother-in-law. Have you had fun? Oh, very fun. We had so much fun. Happy with the family around here. Look at all the pumpkins there. Yeah. It was a beautiful day out today. We got lost in the corn maze. We got lost in the corn maze. Yeah, we were. And we saw the little baby animals. Oh, beautiful baby animals. <laughs> I love them. And Alex them. took a lot of pictures. Yes. And you played miniature golf with the kids. Oh, golf was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're it going was. home. Nap time. Oh, Nap tired. time. <laughs> oh, you said you're going to church, though. At seven, at seven yes, okay. we will. So we're going to probably go home and take a nap. Oh, look at that stuff. Do you? Yeah, I'm in, I need a nap. <laughs> Say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Love you guys. Hello. Okay, I just dropped Alex off at the grocery store. We left the pumpkin patch about 10 minutes ago and he went in to get stuff to make dog food, the dog food tonight. Um, and then he is also getting stuff to make chili for him in the crock pot and chili for me, vegetarian chili, because we have two crock pots. And um, so we're gonna have, I'm gonna take a little nap, I'm tired. And uh, I'm gonna, he's gonna make the chili and then we're gonna go see The Nun tonight. He's very excited because there is a 10-15 showing of The Nun. So 
<laughs> even though the entire world has said, except for this girl that we saw at the movie theater, she's the only one that said that The Nun was good. Everybody else has told me that The Nun was not very good, so. I'm excited about that. We had a lot of fun at the Pumpkin Patch. Our, um, it was $10 a person to get in. Like kids got in for, I think it was like five or six or something like that, but it was $10 for adults. But we literally did everything except for the hayride. And um, the hayride like took you way out to like the actual pumpkin patch. That's like the only thing that we didn't do. Um, but Alex let Carlitos pick out a pumpkin and then he got it for him. So he got a pumpkin and I found out when they're trick or treating and all that kind of stuff. So it was a fun day. It's been like a really nice day today. We're just kind of hanging out and stuff like that. It's been such a Halloween-y weekend of just relaxation. It's been really nice. I wanted to read a little bit today, um, but I didn't really have the chance. And honestly, I think it was probably better just to hang out with the family, don't you think? So I have, as of now, for Spookathon, finished three books. And I'm halfway through my fourth book. So I read like three and a half books for Spookathon. Um, and part of the group reads. I think that's pretty good. It's better than I usually do on readathons. I finished Campfire last night. Did I say that already? I don't think I said that on here. Um, I finished Campfire last night. I can't remember who it's by. I was listening to the audio version of it. I gave it four stars. The writing was horrible, but it was actually, if you're looking for like kind of a scary book, like it's about these people that go like um, hiking in the woods and like this whole family. And then um, they tell like these camp story, campfire stories. And um, then like the campfire stories start coming real. It's actually much better than I thought it would be. Like, on a scare factor, it's much better than I thought it would be. It is by... Hold on, I'm pulling it up on Goodreads. I gave it four stars. Um, it is by Sean Sarlis with an intro by James Patterson. Here, I'll read you the book description. Uh, while camping in a remote location, Maddie Davenport gathers around the fire with her friends and family to tell scary stories. Caleb, the handsome young guy, shares the local legend of the ferocious mountain men who hunt unsuspecting campers and leave their mark by carving grizzly antlers into their victims' foreheads. The next day, the story comes true. Now Maddie and her family are lost in the deep woods with no way out, being stalked by their worst nightmares because there were other, more horrifying stories told that night, and Maddie's about to find out just how they end. It was really like, the ending kind of came out of nowhere. I really didn't expect it. Um, it reminds me a lot of something, but I don't want to say what it is because if I, if, if you want to read the book and I tell you what it reminds me of, you'll totally see it coming. Um, but like, if you, I'm trying to like accept this from request of Goodreads, but it won't let me do it. I don't know why. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, there. Sometimes Goodreads acts kind of funny. I love Goodreads. It's like one of my favorite apps. So anyway, yeah, that was fun. And then I started listening to You by Carolyn Kepnes, which is the, um, the book that we're reading for Peter's Book Club right now. And I think the live stream is, the live stream for that is November 4th, which is, um, and then we start reading Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger, which is really funny because they talk about Franny and Zoe in the book You. I'm actually only like 10 minutes into the audiobook. <laughs> it's very comically, sarcastically written. Um, a lot of people are saying they're having a hard time with it or they don't like it, but that the Audible version is good. I like the Audible version. I think it's great. There's a lot of people at the grocery store today. They're probably all of them making chili, don't you think? It's 54 degrees. It's starting to get a little chilly outside. We were talking to the woman at the farm. We usually go to Stony Creek, uh, I think it's Stony Creek Farm, which is like this huge pumpkin patch. 
that's one that, I, it's so funny, isn't it, that last night I said I've done everything that I wanted to do except for go to the pumpkin patch, and then I woke up today and we were getting ready to go to brunch, and Alex goes, um, do you want to go and meet my mom and Liliana and the kids at the pumpkin patch after we get done with brunch? And I was like, yeah, that'd be fun. So, um, that just was kind of really unexpected, and that was a good time, it was fun. Um, but we usually go to this one called Stony Creek, which has been around like since I was a kid, and it's huge. But today we went to this one that was called Russell Farms. And I think it's like a locally owned farm. I was talking to the woman that was like working the gate at the end. She was so nice. And she, we were asking her like the hungry, Alex's mom and I were asking about like the times and stuff that she works. And she was like, um, well, my best friend lives on the farm. And I said, oh, so they live out here. And she's like, yeah. She's like, they live here. And then the son lives over here. And, um, it would be so fun to live out there and she was saying that through the week they do like field trips and stuff like that but on the weekends they have um like that's when people can come out there and there's actually and they do like for the field trips they do like educational like centers and stuff like that it was really nice out there though and it's really pretty I think it's always interesting though, like when you go to a pumpkin patch, like the pumpkins that they have are, and maybe it's because they come straight from the patch. I mean, I don't know. They don't, uh, they're never like the greatest quality pumpkins. I, um, God, how long ago was this? God, probably, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago. I planted pumpkin seeds um, on our walkway because I wanted to have a pumpkin. And I also wanted sunflower seeds, but like specifically in our HOA guidelines, it says that you can't, plant sunflowers in the front yard you have to plant them in the backyard because you know like they get really high and tall and stuff they really do too so I planted this pump these pumpkin seeds a lot of them and if you've ever planted pumpkin you'll know what I'm talking about it literally takes over everything it just like winds and winds I never once got a pumpkin out of it no pumpkin I think like maybe something that kind of looked like a gourd at the very end of all of this was like what came out of it but it just like it's like this huge like thick it's like almost like this like you know cord and it just like goes forever and it takes over everything it takes over like all of the vegetation in that area and stuff and it just dest it destroyed our walkway gosh i'll never do that again and then like the next year it came back too it was like two full years that we had that um pumpkin rope or whatever it was just winding through everything i couldn't believe it it was crazy We're supposed to have like snow sometime this week, I think. It doesn't quite seem that cold yet. Well, it's not, I mean, it's 54, right? Oh, it says 48 on the uh, thing, let's see the. Monday, 62, Tuesday, 56, 51 on Wednesday, 48. Friday, 52, Saturday, 54, 52, 52. The 31st is supposed to be 52 and rain on Halloween night. So it's gonna be mid 50s for like the next 10 days. And a lot of rain towards the end, it says. This week it's supposed to be sunny, though, in 50, like mid 50s to 60. Well, only tomorrow. It's supposed to be 62, then it goes down after that. Oh, Thursday, 48 for high. Hmm. store. I said, do you want to go in or do you want me to go in? He goes, you can go in. He was like, vlog a little bit. I was like, okay. Or he said, I'll go in. You can vlog for a little bit. I said, okay. See, they actually, I can see their moms right there. They actually have really pretty moms and they're pretty big too. I wonder how much they are. It's kind of late in the year to get moms now though. I always think of all these things I'm going to do and then I never end up doing it. It's actually not true, I would say. I follow through with most things that I say I'm gonna do. Here comes my husband. Okay, I'm gonna get off here. It was packed in there, huh? 
Was it busy? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna get off here. I will uh, talk to you guys later. You want me to be in it? You wanna be in it and say hi? Oh my God, hi people! You missed me so much! <laughs> Alex had to take an uh, Instagram picture. He actually got a really cute picture with Carlita, her nephew out there. I got a lot of cute pictures by myself, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, say goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Okay, I'm back. This is gonna be the serious part of my vlog. I dropped my husband off. And, um, <clears throat> I didn't want to talk about this in front of him because he's very upset about it, as am I, but he's really having a hard time with it. His uh, cousin Maya that we hung out with and uh, visited a lot in Las Vegas was in a horrible car accident last night. Her, She was on the way home from work and her tire blew and she went in the other lane and was hit. And um, so Alex's Aunt Jackie had to fly out there this morning. She just got there and... Um, So we were FaceTiming them on the way back. And um, Maya's like in this huge neck, br neck brace. She's got like broke all of these bones. She just is, it, it, she looks horrible. And she's gonna have to have surgery, something to do with her neck, the ligaments in her neck. Um, and she has like a bl blood clot on her spine. Um, really scary. So I'm praying a lot for her and um, She's the same one that was in that shooting that happened in Las Vegas, but you know, I was thinking a lot about it and it's just really like put my life kind of in perspective even more today thinking about that, you know, and um, I guess I really don't know how to start this one here. Um, I feel like you guys that watch this video on my vlog, the guy, those of you that watch my videos on my vlog that like me, I'll say that, are so supportive of me that this is really the place that I think that this needs to start. Um, I, don't, I don't really even know where to start it, I guess. Um, I'm really tired, you guys. And I don't want to give up YouTube. I love YouTube too much, but on my other channel, you know, I am like losing like two, three hundred subscribers a day. And um, do I need to turn the light on it? I'm just getting horrible, horrible messages and comments from people. I'm getting a lot of support. A lot of you have been so supportive of me, you know, but. A lot of people that have watched me for a really long time have um, just, I think the thing that's the hardest are not like the scathing messages, but like the comments of people saying how disappointed they are in me and um, that I won't address certain situations and. And I, and I really thought, you know, like I've tried really hard, you guys, in the last couple weeks. I've tried really hard to not engage. If you watch me on Twitter, you know that I, I haven't. But there's been like, I think I've said one thing. And, you know, I put out a video about, um, I, I'm not going to address the friendships. Because what anybody wants to say, there's a there's a lot behind the scenes and those friendships meant something to me. And I, and I don't know that to anybody. I don't care what anybody says. I don't really owe any answers to anybody. I don't. Um, but I know that a lot of people have watched me for a long time and um, invested time and energy in me. And trusted me and um, you know here's the thing I've learned like this is where sometimes I think maybe I am too old for YouTube and um, you know I had an entire career before I ever started YouTube I had a plan to retire early that was my plan um, Now, 
that career at the end, all of the time, all of the energy, all of the good work that I did, all of the people I interacted with, all of the relationships I developed, all of it is in question because of one video. Where somebody chose to Google search evidence that has now made everybody question my authenticity of my career. And the thing is that anybody can get on any video and accuse anybody of anything. Not to mention putting out private information about my father, who if you've watched my vlogs for a while, you know, has chosen to stay very private. Does, you know, doesn't want his information out there. They, they chose to put my father's private information out there in the world, okay? Same person that when some of their family's information was put out there was very upset, but they had no problem putting my, my father's private information out there. Never once asked me anything to do with any of the allegations. Never once said anything, you know? So, anybody can make a video on YouTube. Okay, I was messing with the camera. Anybody can get on the internet. And this is a really scary thing. Anybody can get on YouTube and they can make a video making any allegations they want and if somebody chooses to believe that, then it will affect somebody else. Let me read you a comment I got. Let me tell you why. You know, I, I when all of this came up about my career, and everybody was saying to me, you wanna dress this, you wanna dress this, you wanna dress this. Just imagine this for a second, okay? If somebody in your, like let's just say, if somebody questioned something that you knew to be true and that you had never lied about, right? And all of these people, because somebody else accused you of something that there was no truth to whatsoever, okay? Now you have to defend your life. You have to defend your career that you know you did nothing wrong in. Can you even imagine that? Not only that, okay, but because people are choosing to believe that, you are getting sent tons and tons and tons of hate. So let me tell you why I have chosen not to really address this up till now, okay? Because A, I didn't feel the need to, because I never lied. B, I knew once I started addressing it, more videos would be made, it would just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth forever. And C, because I knew it wouldn't really matter anyway. Because those people that were choosing to believe what was put out there were gonna believe it. That's how dangerous YouTube can be, okay? All based on somebody having a personal issue with me and I've never done this to somebody on the internet. Never. Okay? They had a personal issue with me. And so they chose to make an hour and a half video. A majority of which was dedicated to my past career of which they knew nothing about. Never had even asked me about. Never once. Nobody in all of this, okay, has ever reached out to me and said, Hey, can, you know, like what, I, I want to make a video or I want to talk about this. Do you want to address this? Nobody, had, nobody said that to me. They had, she had a team of investigators that were looking into it, but that team of investigators never reached out to me. Never once and asked me anything. So I received this comment and I don't know why this comment was the one that kind of pushed me over the edge. And I don't know why today is the day that I chose to talk about it, but I've kind of had it at this point. Um, this was on my, my thoughts video, okay? Which I explained in there why I wasn't gonna address it because everybody was just, it didn't matter what I said. 
And this person said, I got halfway through this video when it first came out and I stopped watching it because it was just a bunch of rambling. But I came back today to watch it from the start and I'm only halfway through and I find myself zoning out again because it's just unnecessary, uh, unnecessarily rambling about beauty influencers. This is not, in all caps, what we are angry about. Jesus, Peter, I love you, but this, uh, this answered nothing. I hope you make a video explaining why you lied about your career. So this person has assumed, based on a Google search and a video, that I lied about my career, okay? They've already made their decision. And demanding that I defend myself against lies. So here's my question to you, okay? If I get in a video and I defend myself and people wanna know, like, I'm sure somebody will take this and be like, this is him getting heated. Yeah, I am heated. I am heated. I'm heated because I am forced to defend a career that I worked on a majority of my life that these people know nothing about what they're talking about, okay? And now it's affecting what I love to do. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be angry about that? I've tried to play it cool. I've, pro I've tried not to engage. I've tried to not say anything. I thought eventually this will just pass. This will go by. The people that really like me, the people that really, you know, have wanted to watch me for a long time, they'll, they'll know the truth. I've vlogged an hour every day for almost two years. I think I've shown truly who my character is on these things, you know, on and on and on. And I don't know what's happened. I don't know what I did, honestly, on this platform for people to set, to, for people just to want to like find out all these, I mean, like this Harry Potter thing is so ridiculous to me. Like I, I refuse to address that, I won't, okay? And I went back and I watched the videos. The fact that I am so, like somebody would think that I was so like calculated that I would get on video that I'm getting at that, like maybe three to 400 views on my booktube video. Cause if you go look, I don't get a whole lot of views on those videos, okay? To lie about reading a series on a book, which now I'm going in and I'm reading one book every month. Why would I lie about that? Like seriously? So I said on there uh, that I have never read the Harry Potter books before. But I said book. But then I came back and I showed it. And then if you go in there and you watch my videos, all of my booktube videos, not just that one, and you see how many times I put Chamber of Secrets on my TBR, and then that's what is being shown as to display who my character is? Like, seriously? And then I watched a video today that was put about me that someone says, I don't, there's no possible way I have time to read the books that I read. When I drive around in a car for two hours a night listening to audiobooks, and I sit at home at least an hour a day and read. Do y'all read books? <laughs> That's how you get through a book. I had to contact my old supervisor at my old employment and explain the situation to her of which she thought was absolutely ridiculous. Her response to it was, now you have to remember, I have not worked for this facility since January of 2008. It's been almost 11 years. Imagine contacting your employment from 11 years ago and explaining to your old supervisor what's going on now, okay? And she said, this is absolutely ridiculous. Do these people have a lot of free time on their hands? That was her exact quote. I had to contact her and explain what was going on because I need a letter showing that my years of service working for the organization, the fact that the entire 13 years that I was there, like every other counselor that worked there, that I was supervised by a physician and a psychiatrist, and that I was not forced to resign. And she's like, well, I don't know what I can put in an HR letter. I've got to contact HR, so whatever. So I've got to wait for that letter, okay? Now, then I'm trying to get a hold of this website that I have no idea why my name is even on this website that's been used in more than one video, okay? The phone number that is attached to that website, I have never seen before, okay? That is supposedly my phone number. 
I have no idea why I'm on there. I didn't even know that website existed before all this went down. I'm like baffled by it. I'm like, why am I on this website? You know? I'm like going in and trying to like, because it's not gonna be good enough for me to get in a video. It's not gonna be good enough for me to get in a video and talk about how I was supervised by a physician the entire time that I worked in a treatment facility, that when I left there, I had two different supervisors, which in the state of Indiana at that time was legal, that I then changed my practice over to life coaching, which is completely legal, that all of my clients knew because they signed paperwork that I was a life coach in the state of Indiana. I've talked about my degrees on here before. You know, the acupuncture licensure that they're talking about in these videos that they keep on referring to, had anybody asked me what I would explain to them was, it was a service that the treatment facility that I worked in worked for. There were several of us that were chosen to do that as a service while we were there. So they gave us certification. We went and did the certification. And I only did it for two or three years while I worked in that facility, period. While I was there, it was a service that facility offered. I have no clue if they still do. My guess is that they probably do. And I have to go in and I have to go prove all of this shit about my life. You know, and show documentation of when you could practice under a supervisor and all this kind of stuff because somebody wanted to Google search something inaccurately. And we're not talking today, okay, what they found. We're talking about you have to go back to when I was practicing. When I wasn't doing corporate coaching like I was doing six months to a year ago, okay? Back then. And you know what's really sad about it is if you've watched my videos, I've like talked a lot about closing my office down. And it was a decision that I made about three months ago. And because I don't use my office and I've talked about it on here, right? So, you know, as I'm sitting there and I'm boxing shit up because I'm going to close it down, you know, I decided I was going to, you know, at the end of the year that I was just going to get rid of it because that my books were going to be done by then. I would just like write from home after that. And I'm going through like all this stuff that I've had, you know, since I worked in this treatment facility, you know, all these little things that, you know, pictures and framed pictures and all this stuff that I've had, you know, that I've had in all the offices that I've worked in. And I think to myself, you know, like, this isn't how I wanted it to go out. You know, like, this isn't fair. So when I get on video and I show everybody the documentation that people have demanded from me, because I did not lie, what does that say about the person that made the video about me starting all of this? Will people question their motives? Will people question their integrity? Or will people say, it's not good enough, Peter. You're still a liar, you know? Will people still come for me? I think I probably have a pretty good idea of how it'll go down. And that's why up till now I've never talked about it. Because it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> You know, my best friend has been with me through all of this. She's been with me through three relationships. She's been with me through... She, she used to sponsor people, you know, that were patients at the place. I mean, the, to hear people talk about... How, I mean, first of all, it's like these people, they don't watch my videos, you know? They don't hear me talk about how I worked in an inpatient residential program. And they call it an outpatient program. And I'm like, you ain't even getting your facts right based on what I've said. You haven't even looked at the website of the program that I used to work at. And you're sitting on video talking about something as if it's fact and you don't even know what you're talking about. And yet people are believing you because we're in a tear down society of where people just want to take somebody down. 
Nobody's asked me. Nobody's asked me the truth. Nobody's asked me what the facts are. You want evidence? I'll show you evidence. These are the kind of comments I get all the time. I love you, but this answered nothing. I hope you make another video explaining why you lied about your career. So now, I have to make a video showing that I didn't. What's going to be the next lie that somebody's going to come up with about me that I'm going to have to defend? You know, I could get on video and I could lie about somebody too. And I could do some real good Google searches. But I'm not going to do that. You think I'll get an apology? You think I'll get an apology from that? So when I get on video and I say, I know who I am, that's because I know who I am. I put some shit out there in the past that I'm not proud of. I am not proud of some of the things I have said on social media. The majority of the things that I put out there on social media at the time did not have my name on it. And I've never said anything about this, but my Twitter account was under a different name at that point. It, you couldn't find me through my name on there. There was no way you could have found me back then through my name. It was a completely different name. But that doesn't matter either, right? It doesn't, because I still shouldn't have been tweeting it out. It was inappropriate. I know that, it's fucked up. I've sat here and had conversations with my best friend about it, how I'm not proud about it. I've sat here and I've talked to my counselor about it. I've talked to my sponsor about it. What can I do to rectify that situation today? Those are the conversations I've had. Because yes, I do remain teachable and I do wanna be a better person. But what I can't continue to do, and if this is what it means for me on YouTube, is that I'm gonna to continue to have to defend myself against lies, then there's no reason for me to be on YouTube. Because I can't do what I wanna do, and I can't have fun with it, because every time somebody has a problem with me, I'm gonna to have to defend myself. You know, I got a message today from somebody that said, um, and this is somebody that's watched my videos for a long time. And he said, I hope you're not mad at me for what I'm saying. I'm not mad. I thought it was, you know, a good observation. And he said, you know, the drama, I miss the magazines. I miss this. I miss that. But the drama, you've changed and it's different and blah, 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 whatever. And just don't do the drama anymore. I enjoy doing the drama. Like, that's the thing, right? And I think that, you know, there have been times that I haven't been fair to people. I would completely agree with that. There have been times that I've been harsher on people than others. But I don't know that I think I deserve what I've received. I, I just really don't. And um, you know, the reason I've really been posting less and less recently on that channel is because I don't know what I want to do with that channel. I don't know that I want to keep it going. You know, somebody said to me the other day, they said, or somebody said, I was watching this video that like my views are down, all this kind of stuff. It was because of the topic of the video. If I did a video, if I wanted to, listen, if I really wanted to make money off that channel, you know, I, the other thing is when people come to me and they say, oh my God, that amount of advertisements that you put in it, go look at all the other drama channels. Go look at the other drama channels. My drama videos are 20 minutes long and I'm putting three to four, I'm putting four, maybe five ads in a video. They're putting seven to 10 ads in a 10 minute video. Nobody's saying anything to them. You know, I watched a video where somebody accused me of doing all of these sponsored videos that I was all about the money and that if you go back and you look at my last sponsored video, I can't remember the last sponsored video I, I did. I actually think my last sponsored video was about this watch that I wear all the time. I was paid $150 to do this. That was like a year and a half ago, like a year ago. I don't know when I did it. That's the last sponsored video. 
I see a lot of YouTubers doing sponsored videos all the time. But apparently, I'm held to a different regard than everybody else. Like, like this is where I'm held to. I just got on YouTube because I wanted to have fun, you know? I wanted to get on fun, get on here and have fun. Do I like the fact that I've made a little bit of money off of it? Sure. Have, anybody that's watched my videos for a long time would have has heard me say, if I could ever go full time on YouTube, who wouldn't want to do that? I've said that for a long time on my channels. If I wanted to get on there and every day talk about Jeffree Star and all this kind of stuff and whatever, I could be getting a lot of views too. And people that did, people that hated me would still watch the videos because they like the drama. But I don't know that I want to do that anymore. You know. I'm tired. I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of, you know, own your shit, own your shit. Why'd you do this? Why'd you lie? Why well, I didn't, I didn't. Imagine having to completely defend yourself constantly against lies that people put out there that there was no merit to that whatsoever, you know? And you know what will be, and you know what's interesting is, even when I have factual evidence, people will say I made it up. People will say it's not true. People will say this, people will say that, and it won't matter. So why do it? But I'm gonna do it. Because I worked too hard for too long building a career that was important to me. <laughs> and yet through all of it, I've said, don't send these people any hate. Have you ever seen in their videos? Have you seen in any of these people's videos? Don't send Peter any hate. Have you seen that in any videos? I've said it in all of my videos and I've addressed it. I'm saying it again. Don't send them any hate. I've literally had people reach out to me and say, I know you don't want me to send any hate to anybody, but I really feel like I, I have some things I need to say to them. I'm like, don't do it. Please don't. So you guys are the ones that watch me and love me on a regular basis, and you know, what do I do? Because I don't know what to do. I don't know how to go forward from this, you know? People ask me, they're like, why were you so nervous about this video coming out, blah, 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 whatever, that you're relieved? I'm like, because I knew exactly what was gonna happen. I knew that some bullshit receipts were gonna be turned into something that wasn't true. I have no problem owning the shit that I put out there. I'm not proud of it. It's messy, I know that. I'm trying to learn from it. And I feel like I have, like I feel like to some degree, like a lot of good has come out of all of this, like in the last month, like I've said, you know, first of all, I've realized the people that watch my videos and the supporters that really do care about me. There's some of you out there that are watching this that have left me just beautiful comments and have messaged me and just said, you know, Peter, like, I know who you really are and you've helped me so much. Thank you for that. Like, it's made me really realize, you know, and I've always said, if I have five subscribers, I'll make videos for those five subscribers. I've always said I wanted to meet these YouTubers, but then I start to meet them and I start getting opportunities and I'm considered a social climber. And maybe that's because I don't really know how this stuff works, you know? Because I get excited because I tweet out, you know, somebody that I look up to on YouTube and they tweet me back and, but that's, that's wrong, I guess. I guess, I don't, I don't know. I'm at a point where I feel like I can't do anything right on YouTube, you know? 
And it just makes me sad. Like, it just, you know, I don't... People are like saying, oh, you're a bully, you're a bully. I'm like, you literally have no clue what you're talking about, number one. Number two, do you realize that a video was made about me? That the intro was like almost, like it was like an American Horror Story intro showing how, like trying to show like, oh wait, it's gonna stop. <laughs> And like with an intro that was so highly edited, like my friend, I, Tanya, I said to her, I said, cause she watched the video and I said, what did you think? And she said the beginning of it just, it broke my heart. And I said, why? And she said, I mean, literally it was made to make you look evil. By a person that had no problem sitting in a video and saying that they don't like me and they probably never would. And yet nobody considers that bias in the whole situation, you know, of what their motives might be. So I'm tired of it. And I don't really know what to do. I can tell you this, I won't get on video on my Peter Mon channel and defend it until I have all of the evidence that I need to prove 100% a matter of fact. I mean paper evidence that nobody can you know, repute. But until I have paper evidence to show and then we'll see what happens. And I can tell you, people still won't believe me. And isn't that sad that all I really wanted to do was get on YouTube? I've had lost friendships on YouTube before. That's happened before, you know? You know, Char Charles Gross and I had a falling out. And, you know, everybody was like, oh, you were so cruel to Charles Gross. You were so cruel to Charles Gross. Then Charles Gross comes out with a, a video six months later saying that he had somebody in his ear telling him not to be friends to me. And he texted me and apologized. But in that interim, I was the one that was like the horrible person. I've had other friendships that have fallen apart, you know? Then I've moved on, but this is like on a different level. And see, the thing is, is if I address this, then somebody will circle around and they'll go, but you didn't address this. Okay, so then I address that and then they go, well, you didn't address this. And then I make a drama video because I'm just trying to move past it. And people are like, well, you want to address the facts of what everybody wants to know. What do I do? You know what I mean? Like, But I feel a little bit better from talking about it on here. So thank you for listening. I know the people that watch this, the majority of you are like, I don't, we don't care about this stuff, you know? I would never do that to somebody. I just would never do that. I just don't understand it. I really don't. I just, I really don't get it. I've made a lot of videos talking about people and I feel like the majority of the time I've been pretty fair. You know, Shannon Rose reached out to me. I, I've always said, if you have an issue with my videos, let me know. Shannon Rose reached out to me and she said, you know, it really, we talked, we had a nice conversation. I would consider myself friendly with her today. And she said, you know, I'm going through a lot of shit right now that you don't know about. And she said, um, you know, it would just mean a lot to me if you wouldn't make any more videos. And I said, I can do that. There's tons of people to make videos about, right? I'm going through a lot of shit, you guys. Like, I'm worn out. You think it'll get stop people from making videos? No. Because I say that in a video, three more videos will go up tomorrow. Because people's intentions are they want to take somebody down. That's who they are. I've never, since I told Shannon Rose that I would make a video about her, I have never made a video about her since. I've tweeted her, we've talked in DMs, we get along. I wish her all the best. There's been other people that I've had similar conversations to, you know?
so what do I do, you know, like, do I just go on and, yeah, I really, like, I'm coming to the point where I've lost, like, 10,000 subscribers, and I know a lot of them are off the tweets, I understand that, and, and I own that, okay, and I know a lot of them are off of videos, you know, about friendships that I've had, okay, I get that. You know, in the video that was made about me recently, there was about a parody that I did about somebody that I'm friends with today, somebody that I talk to several times a week, right? But what she didn't talk about in the context of that because she wasn't around on YouTube at the time was the three months prior to that, that three people, okay, gunned for me for months, calling me names and videos for months. And that person I'm good friends with. I knew that he was gonna be in the video before it was put out because he told me that she asked if she could put a clip in the video. You know, other people that I like supposedly sided with, it's like, you know, it's like that I've known forever, knew their families. You know, it's like I said to that person, like, I can't, like, you're putting stuff out there into the world that I cannot back. Like, I just want you to know that, you know? It's just like all this stuff, and it's like all paint to paint a picture of me being this person that I'm not. So am I tired? Am I frustrated? Yeah, I am. I really am. I just want to get on camera and have fun. You know, I've like like I was saying, like I mean, I've lost almost like ten thousand subscribers at this point. And I know that a lot of them, right, are from the tweets, like I said, but a a lot of them are from videos that have been made about me. A lot of them with inaccurate information in them. The loss I've gained from a video from my friend, I'm not going to go there. I could, but I'm not going to. Because the friendship meant too much to me. I'm not going to get on video and talk about an ex-friend of mine. I'm not, I just want to do that. I, I really just, I don't care, like, what the consequence is. I, I won't do that. Because to me, that's not drama, and that's not tea, and that's not defending myself. Just like I wouldn't do it about an ex. I don't know. If you guys have suggestions, I would love to hear them. Because I don't know what to do. So yeah, let's switch off that. Thank you for listening to me, I appreciate it. I don't wanna be a Debbie Downer, but I wanted you guys to know where I was at and what was going on with me. So we're gonna go see The Nun tonight, which I'm excited about. I do want to say this, like, you know, kind of like a YouTube friend reached out to me the other day, and somebody that's, like, friends with a lot of different, you know, the drama channels and influencers and stuff, and was just like, are you okay? Like, I just wanted to check in and make sure you're okay. We had a really nice talk, and it's like, like, I haven't asked anybody to take sides, just so you know. Like, in situations where, you know, friends of mine call, say, you know what, I don't, just because I'm not friends with this person anymore doesn't mean that you, it should affect your friendship, you know? And, um, I've lost friends before. 
by either my decision or their decision or whatever. And I always just wish them the best and move on. I, I don't want to fight with somebody for eternity. I just don't, you know? And, um... I mean, I know that there are people out there that care. I know there's a lot of you that care. Um, and I appreciate it. And But I was saying, you know, to this person on the phone, I said, if you had asked me three or four weeks ago how I was doing, you would have gotten a much different response than I'm giving you today. And they were like, why? And I said, because today I'm pretty good. Like, I'm frustrated right now in this moment um, because I feel like I'm being backed into a corner to have to talk about... I'm, to have to defend something that isn't like I shouldn't have to defend. Like I think anybody would be upset about that. Can you can you even imagine that? You know. I don't know. Maybe people don't have a problem with people telling lies on them. You know, but I do. Um, you know, it goes back to that. You know, I don't know. But anyway, and so. I said, but today, you know, with doing the prayers and the meditations in the morning and really focusing on my friends and my family, like, it's been good for me. Like, I've gotten back to what's important, but, like, at the same time, like, I miss doing YouTube where I wake up every day and I just can't wait to make videos. Like, you know, yesterday, I felt that way. Today, you know, Alex was like, do you want to do this? I was like, yeah. He's like, you don't have videos to make today? I was like, no. And I wasn't, you know, like, sad about it, but I also wasn't like, okay, I got to rush home to make videos which I would have felt like before because I was so passionate about it now. But there's so much anger and negativity that goes along with it that I'm like, I don't really want to deal with that today. Like, I don't have to post any videos and I'll still get that anger and negativity. So, why fire it up even more? You know? I just... And I'm trying to, you know, fall back in love with it again to the point where I can get up every day and do what I love. And that's really why, like, I've been focusing a lot of energy on preparing for the review channel because I really enjoy doing the review channel. It's so much fun for me. That's why I, like, my vlogs have gotten longer because I really enjoy doing my vlogs. Or they're, they're really fun for me, you know? And I feel like I can talk about, you know, whatever I want to talk about over here. And people will, those of you that like me will watch it. <laughs> and those of you that don't, you know, but that's okay. I think the thing that's so hard is like, like I really at the end of the day I am just so absolutely normal and boring and I just live with my husband and my dogs and I go to meetings and you know go out with friends to dinner and things like I mean my life is boring to be made out to be like this mastermind you know is like I just it's baffling to me like, it's just absolutely baffling to me, you know? And there's people that could say, th that know me, that could say, no, this isn't true, or no, that's not true about you, and whatever, you know, that are on YouTube. And I've asked, I've, I've told them, like, no, you don't need to get involved. I don't want this to affect you. You know, I just don't. I've had some opportunities offered to me that I was like, no, I don't think this is the right time. I don't want it to negatively affect your channel. I don't want this for your channel. You know, you've worked really hard. This isn't, you know.
I'm gonna get off here. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Nothing like my husband to get me off the subject, which was probably good. <laughs> this is when I'm in a live stream and people start like, they're like, what's your favorite song? What's your favorite movie? Because they don't want me to talk about it anymore. Um, I want to say thank you to listening to me. I don't know how I am going to address this stuff, um, but it has become apparent that I am, I, I can't, well, I could, I guess, but if I want to continue to lose tons and tons of sub subscribers, I'm, you know, I'm, unless I, if all the work that I've done on my channel to have people believe me, like I can't even say certain things anymore because people are like, well, that's bullshit because you don't really believe that because you know, you're this, this, and this. If I ever want to do that, like to regain some integrity back, I'm going to have to get on video and I'm going to have to just show proof. And that's a sad thing, isn't it? You know, that in this world, anybody can say anything about you and you have to prove otherwise. Like, that's a sad thing in this world. So, but thank you for listening to me. I don't know when I'll be doing that. I won't be talking about it on here unless, you know, I don't, I don't know when, I don't even, you know, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. That was Alex saying, he was like, you haven't bought the movie tickets yet, have you? And I was like, no. And he was like, okay, good, I'm kind of tired. I want to go to bed early. I was like, okay. He was like, are you mad? I was like, no, why would I be mad? He was like, well, because I knew you wanted to go see The Nun. I was like, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> He's like, what? And I go, you're the one that wanted to go see the movie. I wanted to go see The Hate You Give, so I'll just go see it on Monday or Tuesday. And um, he's like, well, I want to see it too. And I go, oh my God. I'm not mad. I go, I want to take a nap anyway. I'm tired. So he's like, okay. So, um, but thank you for listening to me, you guys. Um, I'm sure what I just said will just stir more stuff up and that's okay, you know? so bad at the pumpkin patch it was everything of this pumpkin patch was so expensive let me just tell you that was the one thing but it was four dollars and like 50 cents for apple cider that came in like this pumpkin mug and i was like and i only had ten dollars i brought forty dollars so i only have like ten dollars left and i was like okay if i get one then carlitos is gonna want one and the kids are gonna want one and i don't have enough cash for all of this and so i was like and alex has spent his money on um pumpkin so I was like I just won't get that <laughs> this was so funny though like they had this cute little like it was called the snack shack and they were out of grilled cheeses though <laughs> I was hungry and they were out of grilled cheeses but like the um the one thing they had at the top which cracked me up was sloppy joe's which Alex had last night at the party he had a sloppy joe and I was like you love sloppy joe's don't you he was like yeah sometimes <laughs> Did I talk about my friend's dog on here that she used to live? Oh, she passed away. She, they, uh, she used to eat sloppy joes. <laughs> She's so sweet. I think I was talking about that on here, wasn't I? A while ago. Anyway. I'm gonna go home and lay down for an hour and then I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe listen to my audio book. A little bit of it. I got the Christmas trees in here at the hardware store. We have this huge hardware store by us. It's like, has all these, they put all these beautiful Christmas trees in it. I mean, Christmas is basically a week away. The day that Halloween ends, it's Christmas. You know that, right? <laughs> People are like, oh, don't say it. <laughs> it is the truth, though. <laughs> it basically is. I'm excited about Christmas. Alex was talking to his friend earlier, Sarah, on the phone. And she's like, you guys are going to go get a Christmas tree and put it up, aren't you? And he was like, well, why? We're never there. And I said, I bought that little Christmas tree last year, Alex, and I'm putting it up. It has all, all my aunt's ornaments. And he was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And I was like, yeah.
it's like, you know, I think this is just kind of like what goes along with YouTube, though, that you have to deal with. It's like all of the people, like, that say that I'm not a vegetarian. I'm like, okay, how would you like me to prove that to you? <laughs> that I've been a vegetarian since last August. How would you like me to prove that to you? And then I get to the point where I'm like, I don't really feel like I need to prove it to anybody. And I will tell you one thing that's kind of happened as a result of all of this. And the career thing is different, I will say, because that's my heart, you know? Um, but the other shit, like the petty stuff that people bring up, um, I'm like, like all the ridiculous people that want to say about me hitting a raccoon, which never happened. Um, it's so ridiculous when people say that to me. <laughs> Not to mention that Tani and I were driving around last week, and I look, I'm like, we must have passed like four raccoons on the side of the, the road on the way to our meeting. And I was like, <laughs> I said, it kind of is like surreal to me that like this is the one thing that people are like, oh yeah, did you know he did this? And yet in the state of Indiana or the city of Indianapolis, you literally cannot go to a, go a, a block without roadkill on the side of the road. And yet this is the worst thing that people have said about me and I didn't even do it. I didn't even do it. And I went the very next day and showed what that I didn't do it with the recording showing and that still wasn't good enough. And I'm kind of at the point now where I'm kind of like, I'm gonna say what I wanna say on here. I'm gonna tell the stories that I wanna tell that are true to my life. And if people wanna believe them, they'll believe them. If people don't, I don't really care. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Except when it comes to my career. Because I worked very hard at it. Very. say stuff about my sobriety are just ignorant and like I said that they would wish that on anybody I don't care if it's about me or if it's about who I don't care who you're saying that about you're ignorant and you're wishing death on people to question their sobriety and that's horrible I've just like one of the things I've learned from YouTube is kind of like a pendulum though is like I have met some of the cruelest people that I didn't even know existed out there that hide behind keyboards that I never knew existed in a million years. Like people like that that become so consumed with some, I mean, people that watch like two hours of my videos every day on my vlog to then like, they're just trying to pick out one little detail of something. I've never in my life knew before I got on YouTube that that existed. Because when I started watching YouTube, like, you know, you would read, I would read like comments on, you know, like, Chris Crocker's videos or Gigi Gorgeous's videos where people would say derogatory things, okay? But never to the level of kind of like the questioning that I see. And not just on my videos, but I see it on everybody's videos on YouTube now, right? But the pendulum switch to that is I've also met some of the kindest, most caring people that I've ever interacted with in my life that I didn't even know. Like some of you guys out there are... I mean, there are some of you out there that have literally checked in on me every other day. Graciously. Didn't have to. Just because you are such kind, caring people. There are some of you out there that have left me some of the most gracious comments. And so I feel like, you know, there's good and there's bad. It's the bitter and the sweet, you know, that I've like gotten from YouTube. And um, I'm thankful for that. I just hope I get to the point again where I can post videos and enjoy it every day on that channel. The other channels I really do enjoy, like the Peterson's channel, I'm still having fun. It was, today I got a video though, and, or a comment, and somebody said like they were real over the meditations, and I said, I thought to myself, and it was funny, because like every other comment on the video was like, thank you for this meditation, I really needed this today, thank you for this, thank you for that, you know, and I, but, but you know, like it's like that one comment, and that's kind of very ad addict alcoholic thinking, it's like, you know, I can go into a room of 100 people and everybody likes me, but the one person that doesn't is the one that I pick out. You know, like, that's very addict thinking. And, um, you know, but I also know, and my sponsor says this to me all the time, you know, what other people, all of my sponsors have said this to me, and I've said this to a lot of people in my life that, you know, I keep on messing with this. But anyway, um, 
and my sponsor, not just this sponsor, but like most of my sponsors, you know, have said to me like, you know, what people say about you is, you know, none of your business. And, and I know that, right? But at the same time, it's like hard. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I, I think eventually I'll get to the point where it's just been a tough month. It's been a tough month and a half. And I just keep on putting one foot in front of the other. And I try to stay strong. Also, for an example of other people out there, you know, that are going through tough times in their life. You know, this is this is nothing compared to what some people are going through out there. Nothing. You know? One of my really good friends, his husband posted on Facebook that his mother had like, oh, I don't know, like 15 years ago, got diagnosed with breast cancer and had gone through chemo and everything was a breast cancer survivor. And he said a year ago, they found out that his sister had breast cancer and that she was, you know, going through treatments and stuff. And then he said, you know, um, and this was yesterday that he posted it. And he said, and today we found out, um, this was actually Friday. Was that yesterday? It was Friday. He said, we found out that, um, my mom has breast cancer on her other breast after 15 years of being a survivor. Well, that kind of puts your shit in perspective, doesn't it? You know, I'm sitting here complaining about some comments on YouTube, but it could be a hundred times worse, couldn't it? And so, you know, I find a lot of gratitude with all of it, you know, and it's really, it's, I think it's forced me to build a stronger spiritual foundation. Um, it's tightened my group of recovery support. And it's made me really think a lot about what I say, you know, and how I'm impacting others. And what I what I want to do with that. You know, I was standing at the gas station last night before I was taking off, and this guy was talking next to me, and he was like, um, he was like, I see you have a camera in there, and I was like, yeah, and he's like, what do you do? And I go, well, I have a vlog, and he goes, well, what what do you what do you talk about on it? And I go, just I just ramble and talk about all kinds of just you know whatever, and he goes. You, do people watch them? And I said, yeah. And he goes, you have a voice. He goes, that's important. You need to use that and, and make sure that what you're saying is important. And, you know, I thought about that. And that had a lot to do with really why I decided that, you know, with that I need to say something about all this because... The moments in my life that have taught me the most, that I've shared on my videos, I think is what people relate to. If I stop doing that because I just back away and I don't want to deal with all of the rest of it, oh my God, the battery is almost gonna die, then, then I've given up. I'm not a quitter. I've never been a quitter in my life. And um, I'm not giving up, you know? And I think there's a way for me to do it with grace and class. And not out of... I have to check my motives. Am I doing it because it's, you know, out of negativity or whatever? No. It's out of... I owe it to myself. And I owe it to, you know the people that care about me. So, anyway, I am going to get off here because the battery's dying. I'm going to go charge the battery home for a little bit and then I will come back and vlog for a little bit longer. Um, yeah, and um, thank you for listening to me tonight ramble about all of this. I know I went on and on and on. You guys are probably like, Peter, we don't care about that. But I know that there are some of you that do. And thank you for listening to me. Um, I hope... Maybe you understand a little bit more of where I'm coming from now. Like I said, if you have any suggestions, I would really appreciate it. Um, I love you guys, and I'll see you just a little bit later. Hello. <laughs>
it is 12.01 and I'm on my way to pick up Tanya um, to go to Meyer, and I laid down for a little bit. Such a long day. Um, I vlogged a little bit earlier talking about some stuff. But then I woke up and I was like reading the comments in my vlogs and um, I'm like, now I'm thinking to myself, well maybe I shouldn't post it, you know? A lot of people were like, a lot of the people that I recognize, a lot of you that comment on my videos on a regular basis that I recognize, were like, don't address it. So, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so if you just watch that part, you know what I'm talking about, and um, if you're not, then you're like, what is he talking about? Well, then I chose to leave it out. I'll watch it back in the morning. I always sleep on stuff, and then I'll see how I feel, but I got a really good little nap, and Alex was watching Ant-Man versus the Wasp or something, I don't know. Now he's watching How to Get Away with Murder. And I'm starving. Um, I have, oh my God, I was in the house looking for, um, I can't reach it. I was in the house looking for my Patagonia hat that I bought and um, at Urban Outfitters and it's right here. This is the hat I was looking for. So this is, that's why I have this one on. And uh, my leftovers from brunch are back there. And uh, I, today I ate my omelet and then I ate like a fourth of my potatoes and a half of the bagel. So I brought the rest of the potatoes and um, the bagel home. And that was the last time I ate. I am so hungry. Alex was eating a bunch of chips and stuff while he was watching this movie. It was it's so cold outside tonight. Well, it's 41, but it feels a lot colder than that. And um, it was chilly in our house. So we were all cozed together in bed. And um, Alex and the pups and... And I texted Tanya and I was like, what are you doing? She was like, going to the kennel. And I was like, do you want to go get a fountain coke? She's like, well, do you want to go to Meyer?" And I said, sure, I can go to Meyer. I can always go to Meyer. So I'm going to Meyer. And um, I feel very peaceful. I don't know. The nap was good for me. If I choose to leave the part out before, the one part thing I do want to say is that Alex's cousin was in a horrible car accident last night, and um, he had talked to her, like, I guess a little bit before I got up, and she's doing a little bit better. Um, still no real news on whether she's going to have to have, I guess she's, it's kind of like in limbo whether or not she's going to have to have surgery. They're going to watch her for like a day. Um, but Alex's aunt flew out there this morning her tire blew and she went into the other lane and like back roads of Vegas and she was, cause she, that's where she lives and she was coming home from work um, late last night and she went into the other lane oncoming traffic and got hit straight on and um, is in like this neck thing and she like broke all these bones in her arm and then like supposedly something about ligaments in her neck and she has like blood clotting on her spine or something, which one of our really good friends is like a spine specialist. So um, Maya's mom wants to talk to him. So Alex was kind of coordinating some of that earlier. <clears throat> it's very scary. And there, you know, it was nothing about that. Anything that she did was her fault at all. Not that that matters, but. Um, you know, she has this and then like, what was it a year ago or two years ago when the shooting happened at that country music festival, you know, she was working that event and she's just had all these kind of like really like tragic things that have happened. And, um, my answer to all of that is when, is always just, we'll move home. And she has no desire to be here whatsoever. She goes back and forth between Las Vegas and Los Angeles and she has no desire to, to be in Indianapolis. <laughs> So it's been a good day. Brunch and then going to the pumpkin patch. I mean, other than that with her, I mean, that was horrible. But we FaceTimed her earlier and um, 
she's in really good spirits and um you know it's like I, I love you I'm sending you uh, all kinds of positive vibes and prayers and she's like thank you she's like I need them right now and she's like but I, I'm doing okay she's like I'll be okay and um it's just hard to see her you know like she's in this hospital bed she can't move her head and she's got this huge thing on her neck and She uh, works for a lot of DJs and she goes and she does like at EDM festivals and stuff and she dances on stage for them. And, uh, if you've ever been to like an electronic dance music festival, a lot of the DJs have like uh, dancers on stage. That's what she does like for fun. Like that's, I mean, she gets paid for it too, but that's like her huge passion in life, just like Alex's is electronic dance music. And, you know, I, and she said when we were talking to her, um, she said if the clotting on her spine had been a little bit worse or if she had been hit, it was like, like if she'd been hit like three inches different in the car or something, the doctors were saying to her that she would have been paralyzed from the neck down. And I thought, you know, like, <sighs> cause I, I, I said to her something like, well, I said, I'm just so glad you're alive. And she's like, that's what I keep telling myself. You know, I have to be grateful for you know, this is bad, but at least I'm alive, you know? And, and I thought, can you, like, she would never be able to dance again or, you know, enjoy music the same way. And, and, and for me, that's how I find gratitude in my life, you know. I'm just so glad that she's hopefully going to do okay. I mean, if she, she's sitting okay. She's sitting and talking on a, a FaceTime call, so very scary. Very, very scary. Before we FaceTimed her, like, Alex's mom hadn't seen the pictures because uh, Maya's sister had, like, sent us some pictures of her, like, sitting in the hospital bed. And when she sh when he showed up to uh, his mom at the pumpkin patch today, she, like, lost it. It's so scary. But other than that, it was a good day. And we were going to go see The Nun because there was a 10, 15 you know, showing of The Nun. And then Alex was like, and I was excited for him because he's been wanting to see it. And um, and he was, he's was he been very upset about this whole thing with Maya. And I think he just was emotionally exhausted. And he just wanted to lay in bed and watch TV. Because he called when I was vlogging. And he was like, have you bought the ticket yet? And I was like, no. And he was like, do you care if we just pass on it tonight? I'm really tired. And I was like, yeah, no, no I don't care. He's like, well, I don't want you to be upset. I was like, I, it's, hey, it's whatever. I really don't care. <laughs> I, that movie has gotten so many mixed reviews. But I do want to see The Hate. There's like three movies that came out this week that I want to see. The Hate You Give, The Old Man and the Gun, I think is what it's called, and something else. I may go to them this week. Think about getting that pass, the A-list, and starting to use it this week. Whenever I go see movies and I've read the book, like The Hate You Give, I Alex is like, he, he doesn't like to do that because I'll be like, oh, this is exactly like it was in the book or whatever, you know? And he's like, you always like talk about the book the whole way there, the whole way home. I've heard so many fantastic things about that movie, though, that I really want to see that movie. Um, so Tomorrow I'm having lunch with a friend, my friend whose dad passed away earlier in the year. She just got back from her trip where she went to Palm Springs and then she went to Sedona, Arizona, and, um, and I think like Phoenix for a day or two. She got back on like Friday or Saturday and we're having lunch tomorrow at, I think like, well, I can't remember what time she said, one o'clock, 1.30 maybe, I don't know, Ruth's Cafe. I'm gonna have my grilled cheese and my corn chowder and I am so excited about it was actually walking out to the car. Do you ever do this? You like plan ahead and you're, I was like, I'm getting a bowl of corn chowder tomorrow because I love that corn chowder so much. I'm getting a bowl of it. I was thinking about vlogging a little bit while we're at Meyer. I don't know, I might. 
It'll have it'll have a lot to do with how Tanya feels. If, if Tanya gets out in the car and she's like, oh, I don't feel like vlogging tonight, which is usually like she has a hat on and her, a sweatshirt, which is, I mean, we never get, like, unless we go to something. We're going to Teresa Caputo this week. I can't wait. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Um, but neither one of us gets real dressed up for anything. That's not true. On Tuesday nights, Tanya always gets dressed nice, typically for the meeting. Um, kind of between fun and nice. <clears throat> I can't believe how chilly it is outside. Now it says 43, but it is like cold. It feels cold outside. I guess maybe I forgot what 43 is like, you know? I love when they turn and they just stop and they like look at you like this. They're so spiritual. Our nephews are so sweet and Carlitos is getting picked on at school. And so Liliana was telling me about it today. And I said, do you want me to talk to him? And she said, yeah. And she was like, I, please do. And so we were sitting there for a second and I looked down at him and I said, I said, buddy, I said, are things okay with you at school? And um, he said, I don't want to talk about it. And I said, okay. He said, are you sure? He didn't say anything. And I said, are you being picked on at school, Carlitos? And he said, I don't want to talk about it. And I said, okay. I said, but you know, T.O. Alex and T.O. Peter love you very much. And, and if you need to talk to somebody, you know, we can come into the school and talk too. And I think, like, the school that he goes to, like, they have to hire an interpreter to go in there and talk to the teacher and the principal. Like, and I told Liliana today, I said, if you need me to go into that school and sit there with you, I have no problem with that. I said, I'm not gonna have my nephew be bullied in school. I lived it. I'm not having him go through it. He's very small for his age. He's really, really short. And she said that that's kind of where it starts with. And like the other kids like pick him up and stuff and he doesn't like it. And she's like, but the teacher just, she kind of looks past it and she doesn't say anything. And I thought, oh, here we go again, you know. But elementary school, like, I mean, I think we think, like, it doesn't affect those kids, but I think it affected me almost even more when I was that age. The older I got, I was, like, so kind of immune to it, you know? But I think that I just was, like, whatever. But the, um, but the younger that I was, like, I, like it was really hard for me, you know? I felt like, I literally, there's no, not one, not even one sip of coffee left in this thing. It was so much harder for me when I was little, you know? And I, I looked up to, and the difference was I looked up to my teachers. Like, I really liked my teachers. And I wanted them to protect me, you know? Like, in high school, I knew those teachers weren't going to protect me. But in elementary school, like, I loved my teachers, you know? I loved them. And um, I had one teacher in fourth grade. Um, she was fantastic. And... And, and that's probably why I remember her, because she wouldn't let any of it happen. She wouldn't, she didn't tolerate any of it, you know, when I was picked on. And, um, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, you know, like, and I know teachers feel really, you know, conflicted, um, about level of involvement and stuff. I, I think that we need to start having training about all of that in schools, because I think a lot of teachers don't know what to do and how to handle it, you know what I mean? I almost was going to tell you what I was going to tweet. Was, okay, I'm here. <laughs> he didn't even want to talk about it. I felt so bad for him. He's five. You know, he's going to be six. In uh, a week and a half, two weeks. That's when it all started for me. First grade. Well, he's, I think he's in, he's in kindergarten now. He'll be in first grade next year. It's so weird that I found out about that, you know, on the heels of talking about me going through that last night and kind of like, um, you know, suffering silently. And I like looked at him today when like we were talking and like Alex talked to him too. Like when I was like finishing up, like Alex came and sat down on the other side of him and um, started talking to him. He's like, you know, you can talk to T.O. Alex and T.O. Peter about this, you know, if you, if you want to like, 
and um, he just stared off, and he was like, uh-huh. So anyway, here comes Tanya. What's up, Key Largo? What up, Key, Key Largo? Key in the house. house. She's got Key Largo sweatshirt on. You want to say hello to everybody? I don't know. See, I told you, she, is it all gonna have? You don't even. You look pretty. Ugh. Look at your hair; it looks so good. <laughs> Did you just take a shower? No. It's like so curly. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing. I'm okay. freezing. All right, let me turn this off because we're gonna we're gonna talk. Ugh. We gotta talk, right? We don't talk. We're gonna talk. Bye. <laughs> okay, I'm back. We just dropped Tanya off. We got fountain pops. She actually got a phone car. Phone card. A phone cord. This long 10 foot <laughs> phone cord, because she said hers doesn't work at the gas station. We didn't have the guy try it and everything. She's like, I don't think it's gonna work. He's like, well, I'll try it for you. He was real nice. There's a different guy than usually works there. And she goes, I'm gonna tell our friend Tony that you're better than him. I said, Tanya. And <laughs> she's like, well, everybody's so nice that works here. We had such a fun time. But anyway, and then we went to Meyer, and she got all kinds of stuff, and she bought me a pumpkin, Krispy Kreme pumpkin pie glazed pumpkin pie I'm really hungry so we walked around and she bought her one of her employees a birthday present and cupcakes and stuff like that for tomorrow and then we talked some recovery stuff and we had fun it was nice I hadn't seen Tanya in two or three days because um, uh, I was busy all weekend long so we haven't even really talked a whole lot so it was nice to just kind of catch up and stuff and, She was saying that she was gonna go out dancing with the girls that work for her last night and she and Eric, her husband, got like got up, got dressed, took showers, and were all ready to go out dancing. And um, it was like 11 o'clock and she still hadn't heard from them. So she like called them and they were getting ready and they're like, yeah, we're gonna go out here in like a half an hour. And she said, okay. And so Tanya looked at her husband and she goes, do you still want to go? <laughs> this is when you know you're getting old, right? Because like 11 back in the day was never late to go out. And he was like, it's totally up to you. And she goes, yeah, let's just go put our sweatpants on and, go and watch a movie. So they stayed in last night. She said she had a good time. But anyway, I was talking to her about the part that I filmed earlier, um, which is honestly about 20 to 30 minutes of this vlog. And she goes, yeah, I, I don't think that's necessary. And you know, it's interesting because like she and I talked about it for a little bit and she said, I think you really need to focus um, on all of the people out there that love you and all of the people out there that stick by you. And she goes, you know, that's where you need to focus your attention. She goes, you're such a positive person. She goes, I don't want you giving this negativity one more thought. And I was like, you know what, she's right. And then I was sitting in the driveway at her house, like after she went inside and, um, I mean, after I helped her carry in all her groceries, <laughs> all her container or her huge boxes of little waters and stuff. Um, she, uh, so anyway, I was sitting there and I was reading the comments on my vlog from yesterday. And so many of you that I recognize your names, like, cause you comment, regularly we're like yeah we don't need the video don't make the video just move on keep it moving and I was like okay now here's two different sets of people that really care about me there's Tanya who's my best friend in the entire world that's always had my back and then here are the people that consistently watch my vlog and they're saying the same thing and then there's this comedian that I follow Sherilyn Barnes from do you guys know who Sherilyn Barnes is anyway she put this video up, like I happened to just be going through Instagram, and she put this video up two hours ago, and she said, I just came up with this thought, and it wasn't like, her. usually her videos are real funny and sassy, but the, it wasn't, and she was like, if you're in a room with 100 people, and 99 people don't like you, but one person does, that one person can change everything. Just think about that. And like, you know like when you hear something like at the moment that you're supposed to hear it it was like I needed to hear that you know and um so that's where I'm at with it 
I needed, I think, tonight to just hear those supportive comments from you guys. Um, and I needed to hear that from time. I mean, there were a lot of comments on there that were telling me to make the video, but I, they, most of them were from people that I've never seen comment on my vlogs before. Um, I think the thing is, at the end of the day, you know, um, this is not just tea or drama. <clears throat> it's my life. And it's a part of my life that I dedicated a huge amount of my life to, you know? And, um, and, I, and I don't want to repeat myself from earlier because, I, like I said, I'm not, I, I, I was very upset. You know, I've lost a lot of subscribers. A lot of people are disappointed in me. I read a comment earlier on my vlog that I'm not gonna read from somebody saying, you know, when are you gonna address you lying? And I'm like, I haven't lied. So, if I have to sit on video and show, I can do that. Um, you know, my father's personal information was put out there in the world. It just, but you know what? Not today. I don't have to do that today. It's not gonna make a difference anyway. Like somebody said this in a comment. They said, whether you do or whether you don't, the people that don't wanna believe you aren't gonna believe you anyway. And there's absolute truth to that. You know, if I would get on video and I would show, you know, 100% irrefutable documentation, do you think I'm gonna get issued an apology? Do you think that people are gonna come back and say, Hey, I'm really sorry. You know, that's not going to happen. The damage is done to some degree, right? So for right now, um, like I have said, I said earlier that what the hardest thing for me was that I have tried so hard in the last four to six weeks, and it's been four, five, six, almost seven weeks now, I have really tried not to engage, and I haven't. Um, you know, with one or two exceptions, and I've tried to put one foot in front of the other and see this as a learning experience, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. So, let's keep it moving for right now. And those of you that have chosen to stick with me, thank you. It makes me very happy. Um, never seen that big huge business kind of thing but anyway Tani was so tired tonight I was going to vlog in Meyer and she was like please don't she's like I just want to talk and walk around I was like yeah I feel you I was going to get some of those like uh, you know moccasins to wear like those uh, what do you call them uh, the slipper moccasins but the ones they had at Meijer are like too nice. I want the kind that you can get at Walmart that are like 10 bucks and they're not. They had Crocs up in, <laughs> this is I talked about Crocs. They had them at Meijer for 30 bucks and I was like, okay, not the ones that I looked at, they were just like plastic Crocs, but Meijer has kind of some nice stuff sometimes. I said something to Tanya about PB having had a stomach, um, virus and she said something I go no I think we think it was a stomach virus I feel so blessed you know to have a friend that I just go back and forth and share my life with and you know drive around for an hour and vent and talk and get it all out and it's awesome you know I wish that for everybody out there and, and like I think the the reason why like my husband you know and I are so close but there are things that like I need to talk to Tanya about that my husband's maybe I think sometimes too protective 
and vice versa. This is why, like, Sarah, his friend, is good for him. That maybe we don't give the most, um, like, maybe we're not, you know, we're too protective to give the best advice in that situation. I mean, I've always said this in my videos, you know, Tanya tells me the things I need to hear, not the things I want to hear, you know, and, um, some of the things in the last month I've learned and that I was like talking to my sponsor about doing some inventory over. She goes, I don't really understand what your part is in that. And I was like, what do you mean? And she goes, well, what's your part in that? Like, I don't see that you have a part in that. <laughs> and she goes, I think you're so hard on yourself sometimes. She's like, you know, this whole phrase of remaining teachable has been turned as a joke on you. She goes, but you are honestly one of the, the people that I know who in the, the most in the world tries to remain teachable. And she goes, but to the point where I think you're almost too hard on yourself sometimes. She said, you know, like, you don't, like, you don't have a part in everything that happens. You just don't. And, you know, she said, something is, some things aren't about you. You're not, you know, like, it's not always, a, like, you don't have a part in everything. And I was thinking about that Maya Angelou quote, you know, when she told Oprah, you know, when Oprah was, like, really upset because people were talking about her and Stedman and there was no truth to what they were saying. And Maya said, but see, you're not in that. And Oprah said, but I don't understand what you're saying. They're talking about me. They're talking about my life. They're talking about my boyfriend. And Maya looked at her very, you know, and she said, but you're not in that, see? Like, that says more about them than that says about you. Like, that has nothing to do with you. And, um, you know, one of the things that Tanya said to me tonight is she said, I don't want you to change who you are because you feel backed into a corner. She goes, don't change who you are. You, you've never compromised yourself for anybody. Don't start now. And, um, we all need cheerleaders, you know, to remind us who we are. And she is that for me. I think it was so good for me too today to, you know, spend the day with my family and, um, You know, like, I remember, like, this is another Oprah moment, but when she interviewed Toni Morrison, and Toni Morrison said, like, she, I think Oprah asked, Toni Morrison, the author, um, that wrote Beloved, and she asked her, um, when, like, what's the, what's the best advice you give to parents? And Toni Morrison, you should look this up, there's a clip of this on YouTube, where she, like, this, this part, and Toni Morrison said, Toni Morrison, who, like, raised her kids, worked full-time, put her kids to bed after she did their homework and made them dinner, and then she wrote, you know, from, like, 10 to 2 o'clock in the morning, you know. People always want to know how I get so much stuff done. Well, when you have a drive like that, like, I mean, I'm no I'm no Toni Morrison, obviously, but I do have a drive like that to, to get a lot done, you know, and, um, because I'm happiest when I'm fully achieving things in my life and finishing books and watching TV shows, which, you know, whatever, but like, I feel some accomplishment in watching a, a Netflix series. I do. I mean, don't you to some degree, you know, or, you know, like writing or, uh, you know, doing, you know, stuff with sobriety or, I don't know. There's just a lot of things that I feel accomplished in when I'm doing it. But anyway, so she says, you know, to Toni Morrison, like, what's the one piece of advice you give parents? And she said, you know, as parents, we're very critical. We have a critical eye. So when a child walks in the room, we see, like, do you have your belt on and your pants pulled up? Or, you know, is your shoe tied? And we want to go there and say that. But when a child walks in the room, what they're looking for is to see, do your eyes light up? When a child walks in a room, do your eyes light up? I think that's actually what the clip is called. And I'm kind of paraphrasing it, but it's on YouTube. It says, do your eyes light up? If you look, do your eyes light up, Oprah, it'll come up. But I think about that, you know, and like, 
my mother was very critical when I was in high school. You know, I would come down the stairs and she'd say, you're not going to wear that, are you? Or whatever. And they never told me I couldn't, but she would, you know, she would say things like that. And they're all going to laugh at you. No, she wasn't like Carrie's mother, but she, you know, your hair is so dark. I would color my hair, you know, like black or something. And she'd say, your hair is so dark, you know. Um, my, But when I was growing up, when I was younger, they were never like that. You know, I just... But I think to some degree, I think all of us have that in us. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But whether it's our friend or, you know, our spouse or our partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, mother, grandmother, aunt, uncle. And when we walk into a room, I think we still check, even as adults, do their eyes light up? You know, and when I, you know, see my, you know, my in-laws and my mother-in-law's like, Peter, you know, and Liliana is like so happy to see me and, you know, Carlitos is like, T.O. Peter, T.O. Alex, and um, watch me go down the slide, you know, and, and I walk in and their eyes light up. That's a pretty good feeling, you know. blue heart on a video it's the same feeling you know I'm excited about having lunch with my friend tomorrow I haven't seen her since her dad's funeral I, I think have I seen her since then oh she's the one that we stopped by her house one night but she wasn't home Tony and I did. That was a fun night. Tony and I have Teresa Caputo. She can't find the tickets. I go, Tanya, it, it was from an email. Like, they emailed you the tickets because I don't know what email. I go, Tanya, <laughs> I go, we don't have tickets to see Teresa Caputo? She goes, I'll find them. I'll find them. I said, you better find them. I'm excited about it. Ugh. Head is itching. You know, I think I grew up with so many of my, you know, relatives and so many of my parents' friends. Just with that whole idea of, you know, their eyes would light up, you know. And it wasn't because I was any kind of perfect child, you know. So you're going to San Diego. She was like, did you hear that? My brother-in-law, who we call Fufu. I said, she goes, did you hear he's coming home? And I said, yeah, Alex told me. And um, I said, and then you're going there for Christmas? And she said, no. She said, Alex said that you guys were going to uh, Mexico for New Year's Eve and that you didn't, he didn't, you didn't want me to come. I said, what are you talking about? I said, we haven't made any plans like that. And she started laughing and she said, you don't want your mother-in-law to come. I said, well, you guys heard her on the video. I mean, she has kind of like a heavy accent. And um, I said, Hungary, uh, I said, if we were going to Mexico, you're more than welcome to come. And she goes, no. She goes, I'm going to visit. Uh, well, Alex and I call him Fufu. His name's Juan Carlos. Alex and I call him Fufu. And, his, and all of Alex's friends call him Fufu. And then the family calls him Tato. And so, um, anyway, so 
we said she was like, I'm going to visit Tato for New Year's Eve. And I was like, oh, when are you leaving? And she's like, I don't know, like the 26th or the 27th. And I said, well, I wondered why you weren't going to be here with the grandkids. She's like so involved in her grandkids, you know. And uh, she said, no, I'm staying here. I want to be with them for Christmas. And I was like, oh, okay. I kind of wondered. This is like, <laughs> nobody gets the story straight. She goes, yeah, she goes, we're going to all spend Christmas together. So now I'm so happy and excited for Christmas because it's going to be the immediate family. And then I'm going to see if Caroline and her husband, Mike, and David want to come over for Christmas. Even if Caroline just wants to come for a little bit, she lives right up the street. Um, so that's fun. You know, we can maybe all be together, which would be really fun. It would be like the first year that we got to all do that. My aunt would have loved that. I mean, she did love them, but she didn't spend like holidays with them, you know, but... Alex's mom is always on me about writing. And she said, Alex said that you haven't been writing as much as you were. And she's read some of my stories that I've been writing for this book. And um, she does a lot of uh, technical editing. And so I'm actually going to have her probably be the one that edits this book. And um, <clears throat> I said, well, I said I've just had a lot going on and slowing down. She goes, you can't let anything stop you. She goes, you love to write. And she goes, don't let anything stop you from finishing all that you wish. She goes, you have so many ideas. And I, like, really needed to hear that, you know, and um, kind of from, like, a source that I didn't expect. Like, you know, she, she always asks me about my writing or she'll ask me what I'm working on or, like, the one night I was talking when she was like, when are we writing our book or my book, you know, that, that kind of stuff. But not like how she said it today, you know, and she was, like, one of the first people that, you know, read my book when it came out and um, came to the book fairs that I did and keeps the book, you know, she always kept it right out on the kitchen counter when she was, you know, living in the house and would always tell people, my son-in-law wrote a book, you know. I don't know why it is so cold out tonight when it is, oh, it's 39 degrees now, but it feels so absolutely freezing cold outside. I can't even tell you. I have no idea how long this vlog is going to be now, but I think I'm going to end it now. It'll probably be a little shorter than usual. Um, I have no, I said I have like, when I turned it on before, it said I had like 14 pieces to it, but I know a lot of them were at like the uh, pumpkin patch, so they're probably 10 second clips, but I'll put it together. I hope it's, it's probably got to be about 40 minutes long tonight, 40 or 50 minutes long. So tomorrow I'll try to make it a little bit longer. I know you guys like the longer vlogs. I just want to say again, thank you so much for the support. Um, you know, when you're kicked and kicked and kicked down a lot, to look and see a hand raising you up really feels good. And, um, it just means the world to me. It just absolutely means the world to me. And I want to thank you guys for it. So I hope you are. So here's to happier, more fun vlogs. I hope you're having a wonderful beginning to your week. I love you so much. And I will uh, see you tomorrow. Bye.